Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa. Do you guys remember the staghorn fern that I got at Lowe's? No, Home Depot, the last shopping trip that I did. This thing costs $4.98. It's just adorable. I'm going to be mounting this guy. I actually went to the hardware store and got some cedar wood because the wood that I found, or actually the bamboo tray that I found on that shopping trip wasn't gonna work because it's going to mold. The stuff's expensive. Cedar board is not cheap. And I had them cut, it's like a 12 inch by 12 inch, so a foot by foot little square plank. And I'm going to be mounting this little guy onto here. And I'm really excited to do this. I have not owned a staghorn fern before. Normally staghorn ferns, they grow up on trees. So they grow long ways like that away. They don't grow like in a pot. So eventually you're gonna want to mimic that environment for these guys and get him out of a pot. Mine is pretty juvenile, so I don't know if mine is going to do well since it's so young on to this plank, but we'll see. I'm going to test it out. They normally have those round, they're called basal fronds or sterile fronds, sterile shields, I think. They start out green and they will eventually turn brown. It just like, it encloses the root system and helps protect the roots. So when they're climbing up trees, or in our case, this wood plank, those little basal fronds are gonna help protect the plant. So mine is pretty young. This one doesn't have any yet. So I'm hoping he'll grow some and it'll still do okay on this plank, we'll see. And of course, mine doesn't have any of the, you know, the horn shape leaves. I did hear that these type of ferns, these staghorn ferns are pretty easy ferns to care for. I don't think they require as much water as normal ferns because these guys are epiphytes and they grow up on trees. They normally get water whenever it rains. So they go through periods of being completely dry. And so I think it's normal for these guys to dry out and then get a good thorough soak. So those basal shields or fronds will actually help enclose and trap some of that moisture and debris that falls down from the canopy or the trees above. And it'll help, you know, protect the roots and get moisture into the root system in the plant. So let's go over the supplies you're gonna need. Obviously you're gonna need your staghorn fern. And I decided to go with the cedar plank and cedar was important for me because I did not want this thing to mold. Even though this is expensive, if you know, whatever you decide to find and what works for you. I would definitely recommend a cedar board just based off the research that I did from cedar not molding. And it seemed like a lot of people were putting their staghorn ferns on actual cedar wood. Next up, you're gonna need damp sphagnum. This is um, long fiber sphagnum moss. I poured some water into here so it can kind of get moistened. You're gonna want this damp to mount the fern onto the cedar board. So I have that in a little bit of water while we do other things. Next, you'll need some kind of fishing wire. This is invisible hanging wire, so I'm hoping this will still be okay. This is what my hardware store had. So any kind of fishing line that's clear will work. This is going to secure the fern onto the actual board. Then I got this pitcher hanging kit. This holds 30 pounds. Again, I got this from my hardware store. I'm not sure which pieces I'm going to use. We'll see how it's gonna work out. And I also got a couple extra screws. I'm going to be screwing onto the bottom of the board to help secure the wire and the fern to the actual board. I have this screwdriver and some scissors to cut the wire. So that is the supplies I think I'm gonna need. All right, so I moved the angle down just so you can see what I'm doing. And I don't really know exactly what I'm doing either. So this is a learning experience for me. <laughs> so I think the easiest thing to do first is to figure out all the mounting stuff. That way when I go to put the fern on, I don't damage the fern. This is frustrating me because I don't know how to use this and I don't know what I'm doing at all. <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna use these things because I don't, I don't know how to use this other stuff. I don't know why it doesn't come with instructions. You guys don't follow my instructions. <laughs> I am just guesstimating on 
what I'm doing here. So I am going with that option because I don't know how to use the, the other things. Not user friendly. All right, so that is what I have done. That is gonna be how I'm going to hang the frame since I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> that'll work, that'll hang. I'll just use a nail on the wall or something and it'll work, it'll be okay. All right, let's get to mounting this thing. So we need to loosen the soil a bit from the root system. So I'm gonna do that right here beside me. And so our root ball here, we are just going to kind of break this up a bit and remove some of this dirt away. Because you want these roots to adhere onto the board. So you want to break, break it up a bit, kind of make it a bit flat. We are back. I had to change my battery, you guys. We are back. Okay, so we were removing the dirt from the fern. And so I'm gonna take a little bit of this moss and just kind of spread it out on my board a little bit. I want the roots to adhere, but I'm just gonna make like a little hole and kind of just slide him down like right in the middle of that. And then we are gonna take our moss and continue pressing the moss all up under the leaves. So you kinda of want to put all this on top of the dirt. I'm just going like in a circle around the fern. I think I'm happy with that. And so let me get these screws screwed in and we'll use our fishing line to, to kind of secure this to the board. Okay, so I'm gonna take our little screws and I'm gonna screw one of these, I have four, kind of as a square on each side, kind of under the moss a bit, like just above, so that we can hook our fishing line around the screw. Because I don't want to screw it in too flat to the board, because I want room for the fishing line to be able to go around. So I am just screwing in just enough for the screw to fit, and I have room for the fishing wire. And I'm just guessing on placement. So not making it perfect. I'm gonna do one on this end as well. And one more here on this end. All right. Next up, I am gonna take our wire that I have here. I feel like this is a little bit thicker than fishing wire but it's gonna have to do. Let's see if I can secure this to one of the screws here first. Yeah, this is a lot thicker than normal fishing wire. So 
So I'm just basically going to kind of crisscross on the four screws just to kind of secure the moss in place. And there's no certain way that I'm doing this. I'm just, you know, kind of going crazy with it. Yeah, you're gonna wanna find fishing wire because this wire is a little too thick to wrap around the actual thing. Let's see how much it actually wants to fall. I don't know, you guys, what do you think? Does it look okay? I'm getting moss everywhere. It seems to be staying. So it was hard to see what I did. So I took, you know, the four screws on each corner and I wrapped this thick wire. I just kind of went into like an X and like wrapped it around the top screw, back down this away, just to help secure some of the moss onto the board. So you can kind of see what it looks like. But this didn't really work as well as I thought. It was a little thick for it to fit around the screw. So then I have this on the back side and I will just like put a screw in the wall and secure the board onto the wall like that. Let me find a spot for him to hang and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here he goes. I put him outside here. You can kind of see him hanging on the wall of my lanai and he's gonna get this bright light from it being outside and I think he's gonna grow really well out here all summer. I imagine I'll have to take this board down every few days and give this guy a good water or come out here and just like spray him down every few days. We'll see how it goes. I think it looks good. It was a little, a little bit of an irritating process, but I think, I think it's going to be good. So yeah, that is it. That was a little bit of a process. Not going to lie. I have a huge mess to clean up, but I'm really excited to see how he's going to do and be outside. I definitely recommend getting a thinner wire. It's going to be easier to attach, I think, onto the screw itself. So if you can find fishing line rather than this wire that I found at my hardware store, I think that'll work perfect for you. And my plan is just to give it a good drink every few days, just check on the moss, make sure if it does dry out, it's okay to dry out. They're used to a drying out and then having a good soak. So every few days, I'll imagine I'll probably be taking that guy off and giving him a good soak. We'll see how it goes. I don't know how, how quickly he'll dry outside. I imagine he'll probably be thirsty rather than inside conditions. Like inside, I would imagine probably once a week giving a good soak, but outside, I imagine I'll probably have to do it every few days. So we'll see, I'll keep an eye on it. And I'll definitely keep you guys updated on the progress and how he does for me. So if you got one of these little ferns and you decide to do this project, let me know, send me a picture over on my Instagram so I can see what you came up with as well. If you have any other questions or anything, just leave them down below and I'll get back to you. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll talk to you guys later.